Hi, Shane Sisman back with you here from Ottawa, Canada. Welcome back. This is the beginning of a new series called Rutbusters, and I liken it to uh, a magazine article or something. And I used to buy a lot of guitar magazines, and there'd always be a, a neat little column in there that didn't take a whole lot of time to digest, didn't take 10 years to study. It just got into your playing really quickly. I hope it'll serve uh, that way for you as well. Um, today, looking at what we're lo our first installment here, it's about creating motion over a static chord. So our loop station is going to stay on A minor. I'll give you an idea where we're going with this here. Loop station is just going to bang away on an A minor, A minor seventh chord here. And uh, I'm going to take four inversions of an A minor 7 chord here. I'm going to do this. I'll go through these very slowly later on. So just to give you an idea of where we're going, A minor 7, A minor 7, A minor 7, A minor 7, A minor 7. And I'm going to connect all those inversions with uh, an E7 flat ninth chord. It's going to look like a diminished 7th chord to you. Again, we'll go through it slowly. That's going to be this. Like that. So that, if I connect them all, it's going to look this way. I'll start up here. Maybe I'll go... So over that A minor 7, that's banging away in the background, uh, I'll add some chords. And you get some neat, uh, neat little connections there, and some really neat dialogue going. So let's see what's exactly going on there. Um, You'll have on a piece of paper, if you have one in front of you there, you'll have these inversions. Now, on the top four strings, the, the D, G, B, and high E strings, there should be four ways to play an A minor 7th, at least four ways. So this way here, I'm going to play this guy right here. That is the 7th fret, the ninth fret, the 8th fret, and the 8th fret. It's a tough little knuckle bust if that's new to you, but I highly recommend you use that fingering and not, uh, not do that. That's just too tricky to get to in a hurry. And as you can see, we're looking to skip through those really, really quickly. Uh, so again, that is that fingering there. That's A minor 7th in root position. If you don't know about inversions, they're easy to read up on. When the root is in the bottom, uh, the bottom here, we call that root position. And I'm heading up to the first inversion here now, where the flat third of A minor will be in the bottom. That's the first inversion, A minor 7th. That is your 10th fret, 12th fret, 10th fret, and 12th fret. And there, still A minor 7th. The notes are A, C, E, and G, if that's new to you. And that's first inversion. Second inversion would have the fifth in the bass. So that's going to bring me up here to an E. Here I've got an E here, 14th fret. I've got an A on the 14th fret of the G string. And I've got a C on the B string at the 13th fret. And a G at the 15th fret of the high E. That's that guy there, second inversion. Because uh, the fifth is in the bass. Now I could drag him down an octave. Do the same thing, just as valid down there as well. And finally, we've got the flat seventh in the bass here. This is a G note, fifth fret, and that's the easy one. You just bar that down. You're getting your five, 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 and five as your fret numbers, and you're getting a G, a C, an E, and an A in there. So all four of those shapes are just A minor seventh. And uh, here's the neat thing. Uh, they won't take too long to get to know for sure. The neat thing is, um, I'm going to go to a root position E7. Now, how you create motion, or one of the ways you can create motion, over an A minor vamp, you can go to the fifth of A minor, which is going to be an E, or an E7 in this case. I'll treat it dominant. So it'll be uh, E7 to A minor to E7 to A minor. So you go 5 to 1, 5 to 1, and 1 being A minor in this case. So E7, A minor, E7, A minor, E7, A minor. That's what was going on here. E7, A minor, E7, A minor, E7, A minor. Yeah, that's a special kind of E7. Let's get into that. I'm going to take this uh, root position uh, version here of, of E7. That's uh, just your second fret, your fourth fret, your third fret, and your fourth fret, just like that. I'm going to locate the root of the chord, which is here in the bottom. I'm going to drag it up one fret. So that is technically now a flat ninth, um, flat ninth chord. So that is now an E7 flat nine. Now, if you know about diminished seventh chords, that looks suspiciously like an F diminished seventh chord. Well, it, it, indeed it is. Diminished seventh chords 99% of the time are functioning as dominant seven flat nine chords. Again, this is supposed to be a rut bust, so we won't go too deep into it. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe in another situation we'll talk further about that. But just trust that this E7 shape, this basic E7 shape, I, drag, I found the root, located the root, I dragged it up one fret. So that's now a flat ninth. And so we do not have a root in this chord anymore, and that's, that can be disturbing for sure at first. Like, no root, but that's okay, don't eat it. There we go. So that is uh, E7 flat 9. Now, I'll go to uh, first inversion E7 right here. First inversion. That's got the third in the bass. Your fret numbers here in the top four strings, 6, 7, 5, and 7 up there. That's G sharp. You've got a D, you've got an E, and you've got a B there. Again, I'm going to locate the root of that chord. Let's locate the root. We're going to find them right here. First fingers playing them, fifth fret of the B string. Going to drag it up one. That's now a flat ninth. Now, that's not a reasonable fingering, so I'm going to flip it around, and sure enough, I end up with the same fingering I had down here with uh, E7 flat 9 down here. It looked like F, F diminished 7th. So, yes, you drag it up. Really, if you just drag up that, 
that diminished seventh shape you have here, drag it up three frets, and you get what we need, which is the E7 flat ninth here with the G sharp at the bottom. And there's a lot flying by, um, I know, uh, but to repeat that, here was my first inversion. E7 chord, E7. I'm going to locate the root. There he is. Drag him up one fret. That's an unruly fingering, so uh, there we go. There's our guy. Moving right along. Here's second inversion, E7, right here. Second inversion, E7. Your ninth fret, ninth fret, ninth fret, and tenth fret. That's got the fifth in the bottom of the chord. That's a B note in the bottom. Let's locate the root in there. He's hiding. He's in the G string at the ninth fret, so I'll... I'll do that. I can go, I raised him up one fret, so he's now a flat nine. And I don't like that fingering, so, although you do use it sometimes, but I'm going to switch it to that guy so we see that sure enough, again, he is the same shape as we've been running into. That's our third time. So E7 flat nine is there, it was there, and it was there. Diminished seventh shapes. You know, this can get confusing. Watch out for that. Boom, boom. And now finally, I've got my um, third inversion, E7, right here, right there. And that is a 12. 13, 12, and 12. 12, 13, 12, and 12. That's a D, a G sharp, a B, and an E in there. I'll locate the root. He's easy to see. This guy, he's up on the, uh, he's on a high E string at the 12th fret. So I'll, I'll uh, raise him, choo, raise the root. It's terrible terminology, but that's kind of what you're doing. So E7, flat nine now. And again, I don't like that fingering. I'm going to flip it to that. So we see that, oh, it stayed consistent. It's exactly the same as the other guys were. So holy moly, we have got, I'll start right back at the bottom here. I've got this guy, diminished seventh shape here on the third fret. I'll bring it up three frets to the sixth fret. That as well is E7 flat nine. I'll bring it up three frets to what appears to be a B diminished seventh. It's still, it's a, we're looking at it as an E7 flat nine. There we go, up to the 12th fret, same shape. Yeah. So if I go back here, I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna play my first A minor seventh inversion. Back to the A minor seventh inversions. There's my second inversion, A minor seventh. And here is my third inversion, A minor seventh. And then in between, I'm going to put this guy right here. That's my E7 flat ninth. And then I'm going to go to A minor seven. So there's your A minor seventh. We'll call that one. And here's the fifth of one, which is an E7 flat nine. And then here's your A minor seventh. I'll connect to now A minor seventh, that inversion. The third inversion wants to go to here, the root position version up here that we studied earlier. So I'm going to connect that, these, this A minor seventh with this E7 flat nine on the sixth fret. And I'll go to the root position, A minor seven. There we go. Now I'm gonna connect that A minor seven uh, to first inversion, A minor seven. I'll connect him with, sure enough, a ninth fret, our diminished seventh shape of the ninth fret, which is turning out to be E7 flat nine again. And there we go. And that is your first inversion, A minor seven. I will connect that first inversion, A minor seven, with your second inversion, A minor seventh right there. I'll connect that with this E7 flat nine here on the 12th fret. It'll become a riff to you, so you won't have to do as much thinking. So if I run slowly through that one time here, A minor seven, E7 flat nine, 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 A minor seven. That's a descend as well. So we've got A minor seven, E7 flat 9, A minor 7, E7 flat 9, A minor 7, E7 flat 9, A minor 7, E7 flat 9, A minor 7. Neat. So that they're beautifully connected. You could just use the actual inversions like that, boom, but there sure is something nice about hearing that, that little bit of dissonance in there when you're going to the 5 chord. Even though the supporting chord is a loop station, or the band, they're not doing that. But that's okay, we can step all over that. So here it is in context again. That's an A minor seven groove going on in behind us. So I'll just start out with a little bit of straight ahead, kind of bluesy stuff. Here we go. A little natural minor. Ascending and descending works just as well. Man. Octaves. Man. Yeah, so a lot of fun to do. 
Um, you really have to get to know them, obviously, to get some, some dexterity going in there and to, to connect them well. Um, so that's rut busting idea number one. I hope you can take that quickly, learn it, and uh, put it into your own playing. The idea is to keep these videos short, and uh, if, if any of that terminology was new to you, you could easily dig up uh, some diminished seventh chord stuff, and, and if you're interested in knowing more about it, maybe we'll do a, a, a series on that as well, because it is an important chord. So stay tuned for rut busting uh, video number two, which is going to be a modal study. So hope to see you again soon.